My name is James Shepard, and in this video, I am going to show you how payment processing works through a software integration so you can understand where the money is made. Now, make sure before you watch this video, you got to watch the one before it because I talk about the key terminology. So let's really briefly cover that one more time. We have a card holder, which is the person making a payment. We have a merchant, which is the business that is accepting the payment. We have the ISV, which is the software company that built the software that allows the merchant to accept payments and do many other things. And then we have the payment processor who is providing the APIs and all of the backend operating processes for moving that money around and making sure that the payments are processed securely and safely and everything is tracked correctly. How does payment processing work? I want you to imagine for a second that you are the card holder. You are the person that is renting a self storage unit. So you wake up one day, you walk outside, you look in your garage and you think, yuck, man, I've got way too much junk in my garage here, but I don't want to throw it away. So you drive down the street and there sure enough is a big self storage property and you decide to rent yourself a unit so you can put all the stuff from your garage that you're never going to use anyway over into a self storage unit for reasons passing understanding. Uh, so you go and rent this unit for $100 a month. Now, what is going to happen is you're probably going to sign some lease documents and things like that, but the self storage company, the company that owns the self storage property, they're going to email you a link from our software, from the ISV. And they're going to say, Hey, thank you for renting the unit. We're excited that you've rented the unit and become a tenant of ours. Click this link so you can log into our secure portal to see the invoices that you have for your hundred dollar a month uh, bill. And also you can add a payment method on file so that you can pay for your self storage unit on a monthly basis. So now you as the card holder, you log into the system, you see, okay, it's the 28th of the month. My payment runs on the first. So I'm going to go ahead and add my visa card so that on the first of the month, it's going to run my payment. Here's where it gets really interesting. When we start talking about the fees, that are associated with payment processing. That $100 transaction may have been approved and that $100 might have been sent to the property owner, but that property owner doesn't get to keep the entire $100, do they? No, we all know this. We've all seen the fees from Stripe and uh, other companies out there and Square and everybody else, but you know, there are fees that are charged. And so out of that $100 on average, that property owner is going to lose between two to four dollars of that revenue. And so that two to four dollars is going to flow to the payment processing company. Well, the obvious next question you're probably thinking is what is their cost? How much of that two to four dollars that they're keeping? How much of that is profit and how much of that is cost? Maybe you are currently integrated with Stripe and maybe 3% of your total gross revenue, 3.5%, whatever it is, depending on what you're doing, is going to Stripe. 3.5%, let's say, of all the processing volume that's running through your software is going to Stripe. Well, the natural question is, how much of that do they keep? How much is profit? Well, the good news is, I can give you the answer to that question. It's actually one of the most important questions that people have about these software integrations, and it's pretty easy to answer, okay? So let me give you the answer with three categories. Are you ready? Here they are. Number one is credit cards. Okay. When we're talking about credit cards, if you're accepting credit card payments, the average cost for credit card payments in the U S right now today is about 2%. Okay. Could be a little higher, a little lower, depending on if you're doing a lot of B2B payments. So if your clientele is B2B where they're doing, you know, a business to a business, and you're providing B2B services uh, through your software company, the cost of accepting those types of credit cards are going to be higher, usually averaging around two and a half percent. Okay. Um, so two and two percent to two and a half percent is the average cost. And you say, James, what is that cost? Well, that cost is primarily coming from two sources. The first one is what's called the issuing bank. So the bank that issued the card to the card holder, they keep what's called interchange. Okay, you'll hear people call it swipe fees, but they keep interchange cost. And that interchange cost is the primary, that's like 90% of the cost in this model is the interchange fees and everybody has to pay the interchange fees. It doesn't matter which credit card processor you work, work with, doesn't matter. There's going to be interchange fees. For credit cards, it's gonna be about 2%. 
For B2B credit cards, it's gonna be about two and a half percent, and that is a true cost that you just can't do anything with. You know, you're gonna have to pay that cost. The, the payment processor is gonna have to make sure that that cost is covered. What about debit cards? Well, debit cards are a little different. There are regulated cards and deregulated cards, and since I'm not gonna get into all that complexity with this course, let's just say that the average cost of running a debit transaction today is somewhere around 80 basis points, which is 0.8%. So we'll call it, you know, a little less than 1%, right? So a little less than 1% on debit, 2% on credit, 2.5% on B2B cards. Then we have the ACH model, and the ACH transactions are even less expensive than that. They usually just have a per item amount, okay? And so they're going to have a per transaction amount to them, all right? So these are the costs that we are dealing with. So we understand that the kind of revenue, when we talk about monetizing payments, is gonna be the fees that are collected from payment processing by the processor, that two to four dollars out of 100, so two to four percent. Then we have the cost, which is gonna be the interchange cost, but we also have another cost, which is gonna be the card brand fees. So this is gonna be Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express. They all have additional, what they call assessments, dues and assessments. Um, you'll hear terminology like that, but they have fees. Now their fees are much smaller than the interchange cost, but they equate on average to about 20 basis points, which is 0.2%, okay? So if we add all of this stuff together, right, of like where this cost is coming from, we have the issuing banks and their interchange cost, and then we have the card brand fees. And again, if you add all that together, you're gonna to be talking about a little bit less than 1% on debit cards, about 2% on regular credit cards, 2.5% on B2B credit cards, and then a small per item cost, usually for the ACH transactions. That's the revenue and the cost of payment processing. At this point, you might be thinking, James, this is too complicated, my head's gonna explode. This is not what I do, I'm not a payment processing person. I build software, I make great customer experiences. Why on earth would I wanna monetize payments, right? Well, don't give up just yet. It may not be quite as complex as you think it is. The rest of the videos in this mini series are gonna make a lot more sense to you because they're specifically going after software and talking about the integration side of things, but I needed you to get the gist of how this all works to understand why you would wanna mess with it in the first place. In closing, Let's bring this all down to practicality and profitability because that's what we all want is we wanna have a higher margin on these individual accounts. How do we make more money as a software company by monetizing payments? Well, first of all, there's a lot of money to be made in the actual payment processing piece by itself. Let me give you an example of that with our self-storage properties, okay? When people pay for their self-storage unit, they're actually very likely to use a debit card, but sometimes they will use their credit card, of course. And so our average cost is actually below 2%. So in other words, it costs us less than 2% in order to accept cards. Well, the model that we use with our software is we have what's called a differential pricing where you have a different price for a card versus cash. So just like if you go to a fuel station and they have a higher card price than a cash price. So as a result of that, we are actually collecting about 4% on these payments that are coming in, but our cost is only about 2%. That means we get an extra 2% of total processing volume in addition to whatever software SaaS type fees that we wanna charge. That's a pretty big deal, right? You get one client that's processing, let's say $50,000 a month. Well, if they're processing $50,000 a month and we're making 2% on that, then that means my software company is making an extra $1,000 a month on that one account. Now, the going rate in our industry for software is gonna be for a merchant like that, you know, a, a property owner like that might be two, 300 bucks a month. So we, could, we can make two to $300 a month on the software, we can make $1,000 a month on the payment processing. So there's a huge revenue opportunity, and what you really might not understand is that currently, the payment processor you've integrated with is actually the one that's making all of that money. And so as you look at your business today, whether you're brand new starting out in your building or you have a really well established business, when you look at your projected volume of, of card payments and ACH payments, think about that, that entire flow and just imagine for a second, what if you could capture 1% to 2% of that entire volume of processing as profitability that would drop straight to your bottom line? And again, it's not like you have to really do very much about this, right? You have to build this integration one time, which you probably had to build anyway, 
right, with somebody's API. If you build that integration one time, you don't really have to do anything different. You still have a payment processor backing you up if you do it right, but you're now making an extra one to 2% of the total processing volume that is passing through your platform, through your, uh, your software company. That's the reason that you wanna monetize and that's really how payment processing works. We collect the money, there are fees, there's a cost associated with those transactions, the fees less the cost, equals the profitability. And for software companies, we have found that the average is about one to 2% that you're gonna make off of the entire processing volume um, of that merchant in kind of gross margin. Now you don't necessarily get to keep all of that money. A chunk of that money is gonna go back to the payment processor as well, which we'll talk about negotiating that, but you get the gist of it. There's a lot of money to be made if you do it the way I'm gonna to describe to you in the rest of these videos. That was the longest video in the series because it's the most complicated part. Hopefully you feel like you've got a little bit more of an understanding of the different players, terminologies, and how this flow works. Now let's dive into more specifics about how software companies are gonna integrate payments and we'll do that in the next video.